This is the Zowie U2 and it's honestly a confusing mouse. I've heard really great things about it, especially its new shape, but the moment I got it in hand and tried it, it wasn't disappointing, but I quickly realized this mouse might not be for me and I'll quickly dive into it now. First off, the shape is newly designed by Zowie. You might look at this and think it's an Abbey, which it is, but it isn't at the same time. The left side of the mouse is actually a lot more curvy than the right. You can see it more clearly when you view it from the bottom. The left side is just slightly tapered by a tiny bit, but overall is still quite flat, while the right side almost sinks in a little before connecting to the back. The grooves itself is okay, but it doesn't make it more comfortable than the mouse that has flat sides, so I don't know who exactly would actually benefit from this. It would make a lot more sense if the mouse was either wider or was an ergo, since the indented grooves would help lessen the grip width, but the U2 is already plenty narrow, especially near the middle to the front. At the end, the U2 is back on prominent. The width and the height are actually really good, where it fills out enough of my palm without it feeling too locked in and being unable to use finger motion. However, a problem for me was the contrast of the wide back hump to the very narrow front. This made it uncomfortable to grip because as my fingers closed in, the left side of my palm is pretty much nudging against the left side of the hump, and I noticed some fatigue after an extended period of use. This can be solved by tilting your mouse a little bit, which alleviates some pressure, but now my pointer finger ends up clicking on this raised groove on the buttons, which is fine, but it's not the most comfortable thing again. Furthermore, if you relax claw this mouse with your ring finger all the way extended towards the front, I found that the right side near the corner here feels quite weird to grip onto. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels out of place like a pebble on the road, and I also notice slightly more fatigue at the end of my ring finger here. So for me, I prefer both the ZA and the S2 shape over the U2. You can also fingertip this mouse due to the flat sides, but it doesn't really outperform other shapes like the R1 Pro Max or the Ultralight in that aspect. Plus, the hump on the back in my opinion is actually the highlight of the mouse, so you should be making use of it. The build quality on this mouse is insane though. It's pretty much up there with Faxi and Endgame Gears mice, and I'm confident this mouse will last a long time if you don't bash it. At 130 USD, I would expect at least this much on a mouse that doesn't have the most updated bells and whistles like the extreme lightweight or the 4 to 8K polling rate. You are paying for the experience of having a solid mouse that won't die on you, and the quality definitely shows on this product. Onto the coding, Zowie makes some of the best codings for a mouse, and this is no different. It's one of the best, if not the best coding I've tried with a highly rubberized surface that grips onto your skin with or without moisture. Zowie has somehow made the already really good coating even better because the previous ones were also rubberized but it didn't stick to your skin like this one. It doesn't feel gross at all and my grip never slipped while I was using this even after hours when my hand was starting to sweat. Obviously because of the surface you can expect fingerprints, oil and dirt to show up easily especially on the sides though wiping it with water does the trick. The clicks on the U2 are okay, there are many mices out there with lighter clicks, these do require a moderate amount of force, but they are crispy and tactile which I love. However, the clicks do get significantly stiffer the higher up you go. Some mice do really well to make it as consistent no matter where you click, but I think the biggest reason why the U2 has this issue is because the button is a one piece connected to the top of the mouse. It isn't a problem though if you click anywhere below the scroll wheel, but since this mouse can work with fingertip, you should skip this if you grip towards the back. The buttons themselves have a little bit of pre and post travel, but it doesn't affect the mouse in any way. You won't notice it in game and during day to day use. The comfort grooves that I mentioned a little bit before aren't necessary in my opinion. I wish they were flatter if not completely flat. Side buttons feel great. These are some of the best side buttons I've tried. They're light, has slight post travel to make the buttons more bouncy and easier to spam. They're large and in a good place. They feel very satisfying to use, but the only complaint I have is the actual buttons themselves because they have a glossy finish that gets dirtier than the rubberized coating at an even quicker pace. They also feel pretty slimy, especially after you've just cleaned it. Scroll wheel on the other hand is a matte finish, fortunately, and is great. Once again, one of the best scroll wheels I've used. They have well-defined and clear audible steps when you scroll, and middle click is decently light. I found myself constantly scrolling just to hear that noise.
The skates on the U2 are good. They have a balanced glide that is smooth, which makes the mouse feel a lot lighter than the 60 grams it weighs in at. It glides well on most surfaces, though on certain cloth pads, the skates do get a little bit more controlled, which is not determined by the speed of the mouse pad. The U2 glides faster on the Yuki Aim control pad than on a much faster Lamzu Energen, in which the skates do have more tug when starting a movement. The skates perform fine though and I would not switch them out. Last thing I'll talk about is the wireless implementation and battery life. The U2 only has 1k polling rate, which is no problem at all. They do give you this enhanced receiver, which doubles as a charging dock. In my opinion, you should just treat this solely as a charging dock because the improved connection is non-existent in-game. I'm sure if you try and pixel peep it on your desktop or in some custom lobby, you might see a tiny difference, but this is basically the same case as the 1k and 4k polling rate difference, but on a much smaller scale. The charging dock as well, I actually feel like is not needed because of the battery life. Since the mouse is only on 1k, I'm getting anywhere from a week to a week and a half before needing to charge. Sure, the dock is convenient, you just pop it on and it's charging already, but most of the mice I have don't have a charging dock and I don't get that feeling of missing out. Plus, the charging time isn't that long anyways, I just plug in the cable, go eat, shower, come back and it's full battery already. Now I don't have to care about it for a week or two depending on how much I use it. It is cool to have the dock because it does look somewhat nice, but they could have not put the dock in and maybe lowered the price a little to $110 or even $100, which would make this mouse more enticing and competitive to get. Now, who is this mouse for? If I had to be really honest, I think not a lot of people would need this. If you're getting the U2, it's because you like the brand and want to try the new shape. For me, I subjectively think there are a lot more mices that suit my grip better, and because I don't believe in this mouse, I can't recommend it despite the mouse having a lot of good qualities, which some are even the best that I've tried. On the tier list though, realistically I would put this on a B plus or an A minus tier. It's solid, but it's not for me.